Gracious Lord God, we ask your, uh, your assistance, your care, and your grace over our lives, especially when things get hard. Not only in the easy times of life, but when faith makes things tougher. And uh, strengthen us, Lord, in the midst of those things, understanding that it is your nature to love us, whatever we may come through in any situation, that in that nature, that love is always there, even in those hard moments. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so some things are easy. Other things are hard. If, for example, you were to ask me to take a nap on a Sunday afternoon, that's easy. Lisa just bought us a new couch. Man, was that a mistake. I mean, that thing is just a Sunday afternoon nap waiting to happen. But if you ask me to weed whip the yard after she gets done doing it on the riding mower, that's hard. If you tell me to goof off all afternoon in the garage with my son and get our bows ready for archery season, that's easy. If you tell me to clean the garage, <laughs> that's hard. If you ask me to go down to Gilberto's Taco on Division in St. Cloud for fish tacos and warm chips, and if you haven't been there, it's amazing, that's easy. If you tell me to go to Taco Bell, oh, who am I kidding? That's easy, too. <laughs> so bad for me, but I love it. But you get the point. Some things are easy. Other things are hard. So last weekend, after worship on Sunday, I got really, really sick. I got really sick. I don't know exactly what happened, but looking back on it, I realized that running down my health was pretty easy. We did a major move, pulled everything out of a house that we lived in for 19 years, lived in two temporary houses, pushed everything into our new house, and as soon as we got into our new house, we tore everything apart, started ripping up flooring, pulled the cabinets off for paint, started painting the walls, replaced lighting that had been there for 41 years. Yeah, it needed replacing. Worked and worked around this house, bought new furniture, then had our, our lawn tractor break down, so the grass began to grow. I wonder what the new neighbors think <laughs> of that hay field outside, outside our house. And then the other day as I was driving over by the mall, a guy pulled up behind me and we went like this and I rolled down my window. He said, hey, buddy, you got no brake lights. Oh, and then have your daughter come home for four days, dart into the house and stay, and then sprint off to Africa for a year. And I woke up Sunday night at 3 a.m. with my guts in a knot. Just twisted like nobody's business. Turns out getting sick is the easy part. And I was sick. I could not eat any food. I could not drink the smallest sip of water. And I laid in my basement on the couch, holding my stomach, listening to the news of white supremacists and counter protests and everything going on in the world. And I have to tell you that there is not one single worry of my life that I did not roll around in my head <laughs> a hundred times. You think that helped? <laughs> that didn't help. So some things are easy and some things are hard. You know, the great Christian leader, John Wesley, when he talked about the book of 1 John, the first letter of John in the New Testament, this is what he said. How plain, how full, and how deep a compendium of genuine Christianity. Have you ever read the book of 1 John? If you, if you haven't read it, devotion, it's just, just a few chapters. If you haven't read it, pull it open this week and, and read through the, uh, uh, the letter of 1 John. Now, some commentators, when they read 1 John, believe that it was written as a polemic against somebody else because there are places in the, in the book or in the letter where John calls people liars says in chapter, in chapter 1, for example, if someone claims that they have not sinned, then they're a liar. It's very polemical. In chapter 2, 1 John says, if you reject Jesus, you're a liar. And in this reading again today, did you hear it? Those who say that they love God, but hate their brother or sister, are a liar. 
It's a polemical letter. Other people have read it and said that they see no theological adversary in the historical perspective of John's writing. In other words, there was no one that they know of to whom this letter was specifically written to say, you guys are wrong and I'm right. So some people have read 1 John and have, have studied it and said, no, this isn't really nat uh, necessarily a letter against someone specific, but rather a letter that is written now to all of us to provoke self-examination. And boy, in the world that, it, that we've lived in in the last week, aren't we in that mode already? Of self-examination and wondering what's going on in our world, no matter what your political persuasion or no matter what your opinion. But you know what? Some things are easy. Other things are very, very hard. It's easy to sit far off from the situations uh, in the, we see in the world today in lob comments. It's very easy to post something on social media, right? It's very easy to have conversations with people whose experiences are just like yours or whose opinions are just like yours. But other things are hard. And I think that 1 John chapter 4 is God calling us to the harder things of life and faith like solid foundation of faith in the love of Jesus and loving one another. Some things are easy. Talking about things is easy. You know what's really hard? Loving one another. Loving one another is hard. Jesus took the hard road. He washed feet. He went to the cross. He never turned away from the difficulties of the human predicament, right? What he did was he walked straight into those situations it, with love. And when we read something like this today, the, uh, something that says, if you say that you love God, but you hate your brother or sister, then you are a liar. If we read something like that in the Bible, then maybe it should cause us to stop and examine ourselves. Maybe it should stop us and help us look and, and say, the truth isn't in us if we hate my daughter Emily is a graduate student at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. She lives two miles from everything that has been in the news the last week. And when the rally happened, it was just a short ways from her house, and we were in contact with her during the week. And I don't know if you realize this, even though the rally and the violent thing that happened happened on Saturday, that, that actually there was a preemptive strike by the, by the Unite the Right side. They came with torches around the statue of Thomas Jefferson on campus at UVA on Friday night, chanting blood and soil. It was a preemptive move to, to shock the community before the planned uh, a protest for which they had a permit. Now you tell me, if your daughter lived two miles from that, would you want her to go? But we called her and said, we would really love it if you would stay home from that. You know what her sister Hannah said? Somebody's got to stand up to it. Some things are easy. And some things are really, really hard. So that rally that everyone has heard about around the world in Charlottesville happened right across the street from a lovely little Episcopal church where my daughter now worships. That's her new church home. And, and she told me later about how proud she was of her pastors who stood in their vestments, linked arm in arm with clergy of Charlottesville in the very middle of that violent situation that unfolded last Saturday. She said, Dad... The church people were the best people out there. And she said, Dad, my pastor the next day preached a sermon I'll never forget. And the pastor said, please remember that the church, specifically as architecturally, has always been created as a, as a ship. Have you ever heard that? I'm sure you maybe heard this. An upside down ship. And that the, the place where the people sit is called the nave, as in navel, to show us and teach us that we are sent on a mission out into the world, a mission of love, but sometimes the seas get really, really rough. She'll never forget that sermon. The next day's counter-rally was canceled due to threats of violence. 
But the next day, Emily sent me a beautiful little video on her phone of a small little concert in the park and some students sitting on a hillside and the, and the musicians were playing in a little garage that her church owns that they open up almost as a mini amphitheater for, for artists. And she, she was fil filming this beautiful music and she took her phone and swung it around and 20 yards behind her was the statue of Robert E. Lee where everything happened. And she said, Dad, this is the Charlottesville I know and love. 1 John chapter 4 is God calling us to the hardest path. And I submit to you that one of the hardest things that we are called to do is to love one another. Some things are easy. Some things are really, really hard. And the hardest path sometimes is to love one another. For as much as we speak up against hatred or racism, it's still dang hard to love people because we're broken, because we're sinners, and because sometimes everything just swirls around us until our guts get in a knot to the point where we can't even function and we swirl down into that dark, dark place. So as I lay on my bed, holding my stomach in what my doctor later said was a combination of a virus and stress that I placed on myself, I heard a voice. And the voice said, you're going to be okay. There's nothing actually wrong with you. You should just get up. And I opened up and that was the voice of my wife. <laughs> I think she cares about me. I think she does. And then I heard another voice, and this voice penetrated so deep, and this voice said, Jeff, why can't you be stronger? Why can't you be stronger? A lot of people have stress. A lot of people's children go off on adventures, and they don't end up on the couch holding their guts. And if this pain that you feel today is really all in your mind, then that's pretty pathetic. And that's the voice that got a hold of me, the voice of shame. It locked onto me and wouldn't let go. Funny thing, though, when 1 John chapter 4 puts out that probing desire to have us examine ourselves, 1 John chapter 4 never says, be strong never says, be lovable. Instead, it says, we love because God first loved us. And that, my friends, is pure grace. That love is the nature of God and the character of God and the starting point for all that we have and all that we are. We are not in the mission of making ourselves more lovable. We are not in the mission of making ourselves strong enough or attractive enough or successful enough. We are in the business of having the love of God washed down over us so we can in turn do the hardest of all things, which is to love one another. Now, some things are easy and some things are really, really hard. In 1955 in Mississippi, 14-year-old African-American boy named Emmett Till went into a store. Something happened in that store. He offended somebody. And later that day, he was abducted and killed in an act of racial hatred. And when asked later about this situation, his mother said something amazing. Someone said, do you hate those people? And by the way, the men who were tried for Emmett Till's murder were acquitted. And his mother said, it certainly would not be unnatural for me to hate them. Yet I have to say, I am unnatural. The Lord gave me a shield. I don't know how to describe it myself, but I do not wish them dead. I do not wish them in jail. If I could, I would take their children myself and raise them as my own and love them because I believe that the Lord meant what he said and I try to live according to the way I've been taught. And I find those words amazingly powerful. 
For someone who lost a son to say, I would say I am unnatural. Maybe that's what we have here in the church. Maybe that's a good way to describe it. What we have here is broken people trying to do something that is unnatural to love one another. And some things are easy and other things are really, really hard. Now Jesus came and he did all the hard work of saving. He lived. He served. He died on the cross so that I can stand here today and say your sins are forgiven. He rose from the dead so that I can stand here today and say that your future is open. And as the church is progressively changed by the love of Jesus Christ, we will enter into some hard work too. Not to save ourselves, but to work out our salvation. And the hardest part will not be to speak out against an issue, be it hatred or anything, but the hardest part will be to actually love one another. Let's enter into the hardest things of faith together. Amen. Our hymn of the day is a new hymn. You may not have sung it. If you'd grab your red book, please, it's number 776. Uh, it may be easier for you to sing through it if you've read it for the first time in front of you. Please stand as you're able. Hymn 776. Mm -hmm. 